Hello everyone and welcome on into another LEGO Marvel CMF review on my channel. Today we are checking out my X-Men prequel series that including X-Men First Class, Days of Future Past, X-Men Apocalypse, and X-Men Dark Phoenix. Now this isn't the uh, old X-Men series, this is the newest one, the one where they kind of rebooted it and showed the younger versions of the X-Men. So without further ado, let's get on into the video. Before we do that though, I do want to apologize in advance as some of these characters are not up to my best standards and that is because I had to cram it all into a 12 day figure thing and some days I was away so I had to cram a few into another day so that's why they are not up to the best standards and because I'm camping right now so I had a deadline. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting off the series with our first character, we have Havoc. This is his outfit off of X-Men First Class. So for him, I gave him a yellow torso with navy blue arms and legs with a bit of hip printing and some leg printing showing the zippers on his pants and the bottom of his shoes there. I also gave him black gloves as seen in the picture on the right, as well with his chest panel in silver with all the different knobs and straps going along there. His arms are a bit dual molded as you can see up at the top, as well as for an accessory, I gave him a sonic sound blast as that is his powers. It is a bit hard, however, to display that with his character as it kind of comes out of his chest. I also gave him Han Solo's hairpiece in tan and an all new face expression. Next up in our series, the leader of the X-Men and possibly the worst minifigure in the series, we have Charles Xavier, and of course, I'm not calling him Professor X just yet, as he doesn't have his classic wheelchair as well as the bald head. So for him, I gave him the dog trainer's hairpiece in reddish brown, as well as I changed up the torso color a little bit. Instead of using yellow, I used paler yellow to more fit the picture on the right. I used the same concept that I used for Havoc though, with the dual molded arms, as well as the blue, navy blue arms and legs. However, I did add a bit more detailing into the legs there with some of the straps going down into the legs as well as kept the zippers and the shoes. The torso does come with a bit of different printing. As you can see, it is a different outfit. So I added the right buckles and knobs. For our third minifigure in the series and our first villain, we have Azazel. Now I'm not too sure who he is but he was one of the villains in the first film and for him i gave him the kind of glued back hair piece in black as well as a red skin tone he uses a pretty basic palette of just black and gray as his outfit on the right there is basically just black and i used gray to show the outlines of the clothing i also gave him a little red piece of cloth in his pocket there and gave it a bit of dark red at the top of the collar. For his accessory, I gave him the devil tail piece in red as well as a knife and the Ninjago sword in silver. He also has an all new face expression with a scar going down the right eye. Moving back into the X-Men suits, our next minifigure is Mystique. And of course I went with this outfit because the other outfits I would not be allowed to post on YouTube. For her, I gave her a bit of a different design as she does have a different kind of outfit rather to the others. For her hairpiece, I used an updated Qui-Gon Jinn hairpiece, one that is more set back with the hair going down the back as well. I also gave her an all new face expression and kept the same color that I used for Charles Xavier's torso, that being the brighter yellow. I also included the right straps and knobs and for the side arm printing, I gave it a bit more of a blockier kind of square look for the torso and legs it's the same concept though the belts and the straps all in the right place as well as the hips having the most printing and the legs only having the zippers or pockets as well as on the shoes breaking i guess the chain of all these x-men suits for our next minifigure we have hank mccoy now i was going to go with just a regular beast outfit but I did that in my other series and they look pretty much similar. So I tried to go with his alter ego, Hank McCoy. For this, I chose his suit from the first movie, which is of course the science lab suit that he uses. So for that, I also included a empty flask showing that he has drank the potion that keeps him normal. The doctor jacket carries down from the torso onto the hips and the legs. And I also gave him a bit of brown underneath 
torso as well as for the shoes. He also uses Obi-Wan's hairpiece in reddish brown. Moving on into X-Men Days of Future Past, this is the only minifigure from it as most of the figures kind of just look the same in this movie, and that is Magneto. Now I wanted to put Magneto in this series as in these set of movies, he does have more of a comic book accurate design. So for him, I gave him the classic Magneto helmet that LEGO has used for multiple years, this time with a bit of updated printing on the top of the helmet there, as well as an all new face expression showing the bushy eyebrows that this Magneto has. I also gave him the accurate torso printing, as well as a all new cape design showing a more tattered cape on the left. I also gave him just plain black legs as right here, he doesn't really have any printing on them. It's just plain legs. I also gave him dual molded arms there with the gloves riding up a bit to the elbow area and two transparent disc pieces as an accessory. For our next minifigure skipping right into X-Men Apocalypse we have of course the main bad Apocalypse. Now I think this minifigure is definitely my favorite. The amount of detail I put into this as well as the new pieces that I included. For him I gave him an all new helmet piece which would of course be made rubber which would sit just on top. It has a bit of silver printing there which of course carries on into the head as you can see with all the right designs as well as the big scowl that he has on his face. I also gave him an all new neck attachment piece which just shows a more bulkier look which I wanted to go with as I didn't want to make a whole big fig for him. I gave him a skull as an accessory as well as the printing on the new torso piece goes on into the torso there with a new textile cape mold for the legs there as well as dual molded legs. For our next minifigure from X-Men Apocalypse we have Psylocke. I think Psylocke that's how you say it. I'm not totally sure but for her I gave her the Miss Marvel hairpiece in black with a bit of purple printing streaks going through the hair there as well as all new torso and leg printing with the legs being dual molded as well as the arms with some of the dual molded printing carrying on upwards on the arms. For an accessory, I gave her a katana in black and purple, which that would be dual molded. However, I could not find a way to make it look staticky and electric like in the picture on the left. She has an all new face print, which now that I'm looking at it, could also be used for Valentine Contessa de Fontaine from the Marvel line. So, I mean, it's dual purpose, so it could work. Anyways, for our next figure, moving on into X-Men Dark Phoenix, we have Nightcrawler. Now, this is based off of the first outfit that they use, which is a more militarized green and silver outfit. So for that, I gave him a all new hairpiece with a bit of blue streaks going through it, as well as an all new face expression. And as you can see, I did not use a pale blue like I did for my first Nightcrawler. I used more of an updated lighter kind of sea ocean blue which I think looks really good with this. I also gave him the devil tail piece as well as a teacup as an accessory to replicate the scene where he does use his tail to drink the tea. I gave him an all new torso and leg printing which I think was adapted really well into this drawing from the image on the right. For our next character we have Storm. This is also based off of her Dark Phoenix appearance and for her I gave her an all new hairpiece which is just like a wisp of gray and white hair which of course would go down the back of the head with an all new face expression showing her blue charged up eyes. I also gave her two electric pieces that the Star Wars characters use as an accessory with the shorter cape that the Mandalorian uses as well as all new torso printing and hip printing. However, it does not carry down into the legs as the legs don't really have that much printing. But I did also give her some side arm printing with the cuffs and gauntlets that she carries. Moving on into our final two characters, we have our next minifigure, which is Quicksilver. Now I know I wanted to include him in this series however I didn't know when or what to include and for him I kind of gave him a more basic design however I did give him a pretty detailed face as well as the accurate hairpiece which of course is the Han Solo hairpiece in a gray color. I also gave him the same thing that the Jay Garrick Flash uses in the DC series as well as all new torso printing without any leg or side arm printing. It's pretty basic but it works really well really well. 
And for our final minifigure in the series, we have, of course, the main villain, Dark Phoenix. Now, I know I've also done a minifigure of this, and the series isn't really original, it's just a bunch of copies from the other series, but this is the version off of Sophie... I, all I know is her first name is Sophie. Um, for her, I kept kind of the same design, unfortunately, as the other one with the dark orangey brown hairpiece that Miss Marvel uses, as well as an all new face expression. However, this time I did include the power kind of infused eyes with an orange outline there. I forgot to add the lips, which really is terrible with me as it kind of makes the figure look off, but I did include a all new textile piece, which is just a cape that goes down the side there, as well as all new fire pieces for the side of the arms there, which is just a few fire pieces meshed together. The torso printing is of course the jacket, which of course carries on into the hips there and then into the waist cape. There you have it, all 12 minifigures, and I'm very sorry that some of the minifigures weren't as exciting as you may have thought they were. It was really hard to find accessories for some of them, and I just forgot a lot of details in some of the minifigures as you saw with our last minifigure. But I should be up and uploading throughout the week as I have some videos scheduled. They are shorts, however, but when I do get back from camping, I will have a few videos lined up for you guys. Moving on from that, though, this series wouldn't be finished without the finished bag art. So here you have it with some minifigures on the front. I usually include six so that half the series is, of course, kept secret. So I chose some of my favorites and some of the less detailed ones. But there you have the bag. And, of course, what I've been doing recently is the box art. So there you have the box. I tried to do half of an X on the front there, as well as kept the Lego logo and the Lego minifigures logo, as well as added eight minifigures so you could see a bit more. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to subscribe and like the video as that would help me out so much, as well as it tells me what you guys want to see. I also wanted to thank everyone for so much support on our latest video, which of course is the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse video that has reached almost 18,000 views and has gained over 200 subscribers for me. So that is crazy. Thank you guys so much. Our next milestone is 500 and I hope to be getting there before my birthday. But anyways, thanks.